The Gospel of Judas tells us that Jesus was an ancient alien and how was Jesus invented? An apocryphal text, a manuscript lost after 1,600 years. The papyrus pages of this lost gospel have been found. A text that had not been seen by anyone since the early years of Christianity and which some believed never existed. Judas was known to be the archetype of the traitor throughout history. But in this gospel Judas is presented as a hero. According to this interpretation, Jesus asks Judas to betray him. He is the only apostle who truly understands Jesus and claims that Jesus is an alien and came from a planet after Neptune. In the Gospel of Jude he gives us more information about this. The Jews then said to Judas, When I arrested Jesus, why did he not have a unique way of presenting himself, but he changed his appearance? Sometimes it has a color, sometimes it is pale. Sometimes it is young, sometimes it is old. This has led to various conspiracy theories that speculate that Jesus was, in fact, a human-alien hybrid. National Geographic published the text of this remarkable gospel for the first time since it was condemned as heretical by Saint Ioannis in 180. There is little information about this codex. He is in Switzerland, at the disposal of some academics who study him without making communications, according to the requirements of the Masoners Foundation that owns the manuscript. The Gospel of Judas is a story written in the form of a so-called direct testimony of an apostle about the works of Jesus. There are 34 known Gospels but only four have been canonized, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, the others being considered apocryphal, not being recognized by the church. And that of Judah is also considered apocryphal. Did Judas help Jesus carry out his plan? It is logical that Jesus, who knew what was going to happen, should know who was going to betray him, and just as logically. Judas could not be accused of treason for the simple reason that without him, the work of the Lord could not have existed. But the Gospel of Judah was not written by Judas himself. In this gospel Judas would have been the preferred disciple, the only one who would have understood the mission of Jesus, namely that liberation of man from ignorance and matter, which is considered the source of evil. Thus, Judas appears as the one who would have helped Jesus to fulfill his mission. The Gospel of Judah and Gnosticism The text thus resumes the specific Gnostic themes, salvation depends on knowledge, the more secret, the more true, the denial of the human nature of Jesus, that is, the reality of the Incarnation. Another typical Gnostic theme is found in this text. The total or partial rejection of other writings in the Old and New Testaments along with the total rejection of the Church's authority and tradition. Which shows the radical incompatibility between Gnostic philosophical religious systems and Christianity. This incompatibility points to another error. For one cannot speak of Christian Gnostics, as long as one of the fundamental dogmas of Christianity is the resurrection of bodies, that is, what for the Gnostics is the supreme absurdity. In the context of such an amalgam, the coming of Christ is somewhat superfluous, having at most the purpose of confirming what many have believed and believe I have always known. That the material world appeared by accident, that the body is evil and that salvation, would cost in the sublimation of the body and in the detachment of matter. Thus, all the stakes of the Incarnation and all the novelty of Christianity disappear, since it is itself annulled by the sacrifice of the Incarnate Son. For what is the need of sacrifice if man no longer needs salvation? But the manner of Judah's death proves otherwise. Jesus and free will. Jesus also foretells the future knowing full well that Judas will betray him, so goodbye free will. Clearly, repeatedly and historically documented evidence shows the exact opposite of church teaching. There are other equally true and even more successful gospels that are not recognized. How much is this worth in the eyes of one who seeks the true truth? They shouldn't value anything, but so many years of religious brutality put on horseback. If there were free will, Jesus would have no way of knowing who would betray him. If we assume that this was established from the beginning, it would mean that he was predestined, as such he did not have his own referee. And if even the Son could not choose and had to fulfill what is written, how can we say that a mere mortal can choose his own destiny? The Son had no freedom of choice. 
he accepts his role, or rather the burden, in the Garden of Gethsemane. The question remains, to prove that what? That the Father has the power, that he will rise from the dead? Jesus himself had resurrected Lazarus, which was a terrible mistake. Did the Son choose to incarnate? Was he pre-conscious, as in Buddhism? His mission, despite its purpose, finality, but especially its promiscuity, has been compromised since the resurrection of Lazarus. He contradicted human and divine nature. He did not fully understand the mission and especially did not understand that it would be fatal. The Father tried to reconnect with man through the Son. Very nice so far, but why with a sacrifice? Isn't the way too pagan? When and why did he lose this connection? His life, even if it was a role, was subject to a bigger plan. Was Jesus manipulated in profane terms by his own father? Our son's statement, Jesus begged to have his glass taken away. His sacrifice, far from being voluntary, is imposed. Cruel, and useless in both profane and theological terms. His blood should have blotted out the original sin in the shadow of which all the people of Cain and Abel live. But there is a precedent in which another son is replaced by the Lamb. If God is an architect, Judas was just one of the pieces he used to give the structure the strength and appearance it needed. But the real mystery only now arises, if Judas really did the will of Jesus and considering that, according to the manuscript, he was the closest to Jesus. And the one million dollars question is, why did Judah hang himself, or did he really hang himself? The Gospel of Judas tells us about the existence of aliens and UFOs in the time of Jesus Christ. Judas tells us that Jesus had phenomenal powers and was a disguised alien, and the Star of Bethlehem was actually an alien spaceship. There is no other way to explain all those strange events that invariably accompanied Jesus. Even ancient scientists knew about the true origin of Jesus. However, they hid it carefully, fearing, quite naturally, the persecution of the church. In another text, Judas also considers the variant, how was Jesus invented? At least one billion earthlings strongly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, even part of the divinity seen as the Holy Third. This terrible wandering is caused by ignorance and confusion between the biblical gods and the true God. The world's occult maintains ignorance and confusion. With the help of hundreds of thousands of well-paid religious ministers, because it needs a mystically intoxicated population that does not defend its human rights. You rebellious angels must know exactly how the God Jesus Christ was made, so as not to be enlisted in the flock of mystical delusions and to lead mankind to the true divinity. No historical source of the time mentions Jeshua of Nazareth, deified by savage priests about 19 centuries ago under the Greek name Christos, hence the name Christian worship, or Jesus Christ. The Jewish historian Flavius Josephus mentions John the Baptist, but it says nothing about Jeshua being recognized by him as the Messiah, or the miracles described in the Gospels. If Jeshua had truly been a semi-divine being and performed the miracles listed in the Gospels, all historians of the time would have mentioned him in great detail. Around 90 AD they are contradictory, for which the savage clergy canonized only four of them, according to Matthew, Luke, John, and Mark, in order to mislead the believing population canonized the gospel according to Peter. Because the apostle states that Jeshua was a simple sage, without divine ancestry. The thirteenth apostle, Mary Magdalene. Neither Jeshua nor his apostles wrote anything. A very strange fact at a time when writing was commonplace in the counties, were they illiterate? According to biblical legends, Jeshua was the product of religious turmoil among Roman occupied Jews. The mythical Moshe, of whom we have no evidence that he existed, would have tried to reduce the Jewish gods to Yahweh only. But the ancient Jews, including Jeshua, continued to invoke them all. Messiah, Messiah, a small sect, the Essenes or Notsri, rejects religious corruption and lives by very strict principles, joint work, abstinence, isolated from the rest of the population, waiting for another savior.
Against this background of despair created by the Roman occupation, the interpretation of prophecies and the expectation of a divine savior appeared Jeshua, an obscure Jew from Nazareth. As Mercia Eliade, the greatest Romanian specialist in religious matters, called him. According to the apocryphal works, the carpenter Joseph of Nazareth married a Miriam girl, but discovered that she was already pregnant. Joseph wept and wanted to kill Miriam. But an angel appeared to him in a dream and told him that the baby in her womb had been conceived by the Holy Spirit. This was not possible because of the prohibition in the Book of Enoch in the Old Testament that divine creatures were not allowed to mingle with wild earthlings, but Joseph believed the angel's words. As such, shortly after the wedding, he went with his pregnant wife to Bethlehem to participate in the census conducted by the Romans. Historical sources do not confirm any census at that time. But the legend was adapted for a mystical reason. The prophet Micah had predicted that the Messiah would be born of the seed of King David in Bethlehem. Did you guess that a thousand years after the death of King David, in a wild population that did not mention any genealogy in writing, Jeshua was found descended from this king through his mother? This is how the Gospel begins to confirm Micah's prophecy. The forgery was made about a century after Jeshua's death. Therefore, until the 4th century AD, Christians celebrated the birth of Jesus on March 28th, April 18th and May 29th. In that century, the birth was superimposed on the Roman Feast of Sol Invictus on December 25th and so on. Remained until now. Today's Christian legends and rituals no longer take into account the fact that the spring in Judea is not cold but intoxicates the naive population with scenes and songs about being born in the cold, under the breath of oxen. Three magicians guided by a star would have come to the baby's manger to worship him as a heavenly messenger. The cutlery of the legend is complete, isn't it? The long-awaited Messiah was born. County King Herod, frightened by the appearance of a counter-candidate, allegedly ordered the killing of several thousand children under the age of 2,000 in the county. The information is not confirmed by any historical source, although such a carnage would have attracted the attention of county and Romanian historians. Did you guess that a new miracle is coming? The angel presented himself to Joseph again and commanded him to flee to Egypt. According to apocryphal accounts, Joseph and Mary went with the baby to Egypt, using a donkey for transport and a few goats for food. Miracles were happening around them. The date-goers were able to reap the fruits, the lions and leopards lay on the ground. The wolves accompanied the little flock of goats without attacking it. If Moshe and the fugitive counties had wandered for 40 years from Egypt to Judea, the divine family quickly reached Heliopolis. Where it is not known what he did. Herod died in the year 4 BC, and the angel told Joseph that they could return home to Nazareth, where he was working. He told the Jeshua many divine wonders, killing and resurrecting children who had upset him, blinding their parents, injuring the village teacher who had tried to teach him the alphabet, turning people into pigs, accusing Joseph of not being his real father. According to the Gospel of Luke, at the age of 12, Jeshua was taken to the temple in Jerusalem for the bar mitzvah ritual of initiation into adulthood. There he would have a dialogue with several rabbis, who obeyed him like lambs. The girl Mary and Joseph, scared that they had lost him, would have said. These miracles are not confirmed by any historical source, but the naive believe them. Holy simplicity. Not even biblical sources tell us what Jeshua did until the year 28. Modern enmists try to make up for the lack of information with all sorts of assumptions. He would have worked as a carpenter with his father, he would have been initiated by the Essenes. He would have learned India. In that year, Jeshua was baptized in the Jordan, under the supervision of John the Baptist, a wild prophet who roamed the desert, fed on locusts and honey. Walked almost naked, criticized the depravity of his people, and announced the coming of the Lord's kingdom. At the baptism, heaven would have opened and a voice would have been heard saying, You are my beloved son, I have been kind to you. Can you believe that God was thus addressing a savage from a tiny planet in the Milky Way? How small and uncompromising God must be in the conception of Christian mystics.
In reality, he is so grand, omniscient, omnipotent. After the baptism, Jeshua was in the wilderness to fast for 40 days and be tempted by the devil. The spirit of an infinite universe descended on a planet like a speck of dust, to play the test of one's own son's faith. No organism can survive without water for more than a few days, especially in the desert. A 40-day fast kills the strongest man, and Jeshua was a man. For the spirit did not procreate with a savage earthling, against his own prohibition. Temptation by the devil is a new savage gogomania. Supernatural deities devil, Satan, demon. The only ones who rebel against the divine will are the idolatrous savages, but who cares? According to the Old Testament, Satan was not a devil, but an angel from the court of the god Yahweh. The term Diabolus was not known to Jeshua because it was invented by the Romans, a century after his death, it meant slanderous man. Who tempted the deification aspirant Joshua? How could Joshua tell the devil that he worships only the Lord God, when he had not the slightest notion of divinity, but worshiped the tribal gods of his nation, especially Eli? Whose son was believed to be secret? After the temptation, Jeshua gathers a few followers among modest fishermen, shepherds, peasants. Begins to preach among the counties and perform the miracles for which he will later be deified, the resurrection of a dead Lazarus, the healing of the blind and the possessed. The multiplication of the loaves and fish, the transformation of water into wine. All these miracles were previously circulating in the Jewish folklore. Attributed to the prophet Elijah the Tespitanal, so the authors of the Gospels took them and gave them a little more thought. In reality, the divine creatures do not even resurrect the people who have passed the clinical death phase, because, after 8 to 10 minutes, the brain decomposes irreparably. None of the miracles described in the Gospels have been retained by any historical source, a very strange fact for the echo they would have aroused if they had been true. They could not be true. Because the Gospel texts show that Jeshua was not even a cultured man for his time, not to mention a semi-divine or even divine being. Here are the arguments, as they result from the canonized Gospels themselves. 1. Jeshua had no knowledge of the true divinity, discovered only by the scholars of the 20th century BC, but worshipped the ignorant, cruel, illogical, immoral tribal gods of the Old Testament. He believed all the aberrations in this document and stated that he came to the world to complete it, not to spoil it. 2. He did not know how to organize and function the nearby cosmos or even our solar system, which is known to contemporary Egyptian scholars. He did not even know that the earth was spherical and encompassed several continents, with more populations. His world was reduced to Judea, the neighboring statues and the invading Roman Empire. He had acquired the wrong astronomical conception that the infinite universe was reduced to a small part of the Earth and the celestial vault visible above it, in which he imagined a celestial kingdom of the Jewish tribal gods, led by Father Eli. 3. Jeshua did not teach the ignorant and poor Jews of his day to know nature well and to live better by using knowledge, because he himself was ignorant. For example, the Egyptians of his day used electricity and irrigation, the Europeans used about 140 herbs, the Chinese produced silk and paper. Had he been a divine creature, he would have made a leap in the scientific knowledge and material spiritual creation of the Jews, much like the god Oans produced in the Babylonians. It seems that Oans was an alien civilizing hero. 4. God and the subordinate divine creatures are expressed in clear laws, explanations, and commandments so that every human being can understand them. It still confuses the minds of the ignorant in his day and in the present. 5. Jeshua announced the imminent arrival of the kingdom of heaven, which did not happen. Despite this visible failure, the ignorant are still waiting, after 2000 years, for the coming of this kingdom. In reality, we live in the universe, inspired and protected by the divinity, within the limits of our merits. There is no other kingdom in which God acts as a slave master. Those who, fooled by the priests, are still waiting for the kingdom of heaven promised by Jeshua are invited to read Matthew with clear minds, 17-28. In this article, 
Jeshua makes it clear that the kingdom will come before many of his contemporaries die. 6. Jeshua's statements and recommendations are so contradictory that he seems to have had a double personality, sometimes gentle, sometimes tyrannical and evil. For example, he recommends the love of neighbor and even of enemies, gentle conduct, almsgiving. But when he had instructed his apostles, he told him that he had not come to make peace on earth, but a sword. For he had come to separate the father from the son, the mother from the daughter, the daughter-in-law from the mother-in-law, his housewives. Unfortunately, this promise was fulfilled exactly. Not because it was divine, but because the mystical ignorant people applied it exactly. In the last 17 centuries, hundreds of millions of earthlings have been killed in the name of Christianity. Aryans, Amerindians, Asians, Arabs. Europe was shaken by powerful religious wars, culminating in the two world wars fought mostly between Christians. Divination on religious grounds also penetrated families, as promised, the Byzantine Empress Irina removed her son's eyes because she refused to become a Christian. And her children and parents came to quarrel over religion. The new religion has severely divided the Aryan family into several branches of Catholicism and Orthodoxy. With no possibility of reconciliation. Scalavi and nomadic shepherds. 7. Jeshua praised ignorance and regarded scientific knowledge, to which he had no access, as folly until the victory of the Renaissance. Even the old scientific knowledge of the heliocentric system, electricity, and the use of steam were forbidden by the Christian Church and covered by the mist of oblivion. Irrationality. Ignorance and intolerance of the scientific knowledge of the world were under the basic laws of this religion. Who will give us back the 13 centuries of progress and evolution stolen by the Christian religion? Christian clergy should kneel among the people, asking for forgiveness for this terrible mutilation of the destiny of mankind. But they are just as aggressive in spreading religious darkness, just as dishonest to people, and just as blasphemous to the Godhead. They dare to use the latest achievements of science against which they have fought for centuries to spread their myths and blasphemous rituals electricity, television, internet, print, their action mentally affects the aggressed people, because they cause serious contradictions in the brain. Between modern scientific knowledge and the savage religious myths. Because of this, from 1990 until now, the number of mentally ill people among Romanians has increased several times anxieties. Delusions, obsessions, phobias. Psychologists and psychiatrists can only cure a small part of people suffering from religious aggression, which you can see in our society. The mentally ill is also manifested in public life. 8. Jeshua manifested a fierce Manichaeanism, unworthy of a divine son. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me is scattered, he threatens. He who loves his father or his mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, proclaims the future God. This inhuman and anti-divine conception has been fully applied by all branches of the Christian Church. Aryan and Native American pagans were crippled and killed by the tens of millions, tens of millions of other blacks were enslaved, Christian fanatics left their parents and children in misery. In order to raise money for the spread of the new religion, you rebellious angels know that the true God is not jealous of the love we have for our parents and children. So you will love your families from the bottom of your heart. For God we have adoration, absolute faith, unwavering respect. 9. The role models that Jeshua presented as having already reached the kingdom of heaven were simply odious, Abraham incestuous and pimp, Jacob deceiving his father and brother, Isaac the idolater. The wise Solomon who had killed his brother and appropriated his harem of 800 fathers of his father. Beautiful models of morality and wisdom. My friends, we will consider ourselves as models of the true divine messengers, the moral creators who brought humanity out of the religious darkness and led it to the present phase of civilization. The section of our heroes. 10. Jeshua's faith was not even global, but nationalist Jewish, with racist tendencies, in the spirit of the Old Testament. 
he made it clear that he was sent only for the lost sheep of the flock of Israel, and that the children of the Canaanite dog should not be given bread to the children of the Jews. Only at the insistence of the apostles did a Canaanite woman heal. He forbade the apostles to enter the homes of strangers of their own nation. But the passage in the gospel was anointed by the priests, replacing the word strangers with pagans. In reality, Jeshua did not have the notions of Christian and pagan. Because they were invented after his death and deification, in Greek and Latin. The Jews called the Jesuit sectarians Nazareth or Notsri. We do not know what Jeshua and the apostles called themselves. 11. Jeshua frequently used insults unworthy of a divine soil, such as puppies, cunning and fornicating people, dogs, fools. Just like any uneducated savage of our time. 12. Jeshua believed in the legend of creation in the Old Testament, a legend proven to be false by many sciences, history, anthropology, genetics, astrophysics. So he was a simple savage and ignorant mystic, who believed that mankind descended from Adam and Eve, the primordial couple created by the Elohim in 3760 BC. 13. If Jeshua had been a divine creature or at least an exceptional paranormal, as the miraculous healings show, he could not have been tortured and killed. He would have changed the thoughts of the county judges and the Romanian soldiers or he would have miraculously disappeared from Jerusalem. His desperate cry, Eli, Eli, why did you leave me? Indicates a simple mystical mortal who invokes his favorite god. Christian priests fool foolishness into saying that Jeshua willingly submitted to sacrifice to redeem the sins of mankind from Adam and Eve. More and more blasphemous. They claim that God himself would have sacrificed his son for the redemption of those sins. The wild conception of the sacrifice of men and animals is proper to the Jewish religion. But it has nothing to do with the divinity. Earthlings were created or colonized on earth millions of years before the supposed creation of the Adam-Eve couple. Without any sin of knowing good and evil, and even with the obligation to know the world and the divine will correctly. All the savages in the world have made human sacrifices to the gods they imagined, but the true God did not ask for them, did not inspire them, and did not accept them.